Welcome back, and today is a tech day. Yes, tech. We're talking cameras today. If you don't like cameras, well, maybe you like me, so you'll stick around. But otherwise, here's your warning, so that's about it. We're going on. We are talking the Panasonic GH5. Is it still good? It came out a couple years ago, and, you know, I'll be honest, it's not my favorite camera, so this is not going to be a biased review. Talking about how great it is, because this is not being shot on the GH5, because I think there are better options now. But what is it good for? Why is it good? And why is it good for especially somebody starting out? So, let's get into it. I have in my hand the GH5. On the GH5, I have the 8 to 18 millimeter lens. Now, why would I want such a wide lens? Eight millimeters, we all know, gets to a point where it's way too wide. It's so wide that you can't really even do anything with it. It distorts everything, but that's not the case on this camera for one of the reasons why I don't like it. It's a micro four-thirds sensor. If you don't know what a micro four-thirds sensor is, it's similar to a crop sensor. So a full frame is going to be this big, and then we get to micro four thirds, which is a lot smaller. So this lens is a full frame lens, saying that if it was a full frame sensor that we were using it on, it would be an eight to 18 millimeter lens. But since it's micro four thirds, you have to multiply it and it ends up being about a 16 to 35. So if you're a Canon user, Sony user, it pretty much comes down to the same thing as the 16 to 35 that we all know that we all love. Now Canon's starting to stray away a little bit and get into the 15 to 35 range, getting us all out of whack. But that one millimeter, it makes a difference. So with it being a micro four thirds, your low light quality is actually not going to be as good. You are going to get better performance in low light, and low light is darkness, if you didn't know that. So whenever it's dark outside, your picture quality on this is not going to be as good as it will be on an R5, on an A7S III, on those full frame cameras that are known for being very good in the darkness. This is not going to be a good option if you're shooting a lot of nightclubs, if you're shooting a lot of different events that there's not good lighting, any kind of nighttime stuff. This just isn't a great camera. And also, it's not a great camera if you're shooting photos. Now, it does shoot photos, of course. It's a DSLR. And actually, it's still, I think, technically considered a photo camera. But that is just because of the build of it. The nice thing about this, and I'm not just going to sit here and rip it apart. I will mention some great things about it. The nice thing about it is that with it being this small and with it being the DSLR size, it's one of the few cameras that has no record limit. So on the Canon, for example, which is my other shooter, which is what I'm shooting this on right now, there's a 30 minute record limit. Now that gets very, very annoying. It gets annoying when you're shooting long form podcasts, whenever you're shooting interviews, whenever I shot a DJ set one time. It gets annoying because it stops recording at 30 minutes and then you have to wait for it to buffer, write the rest of the files, and then you can start recording again. Now, you might say it's not a big deal that you have to stop for a couple seconds and then keep going, but for something like a wedding ceremony or a DJ set, you can't miss a couple seconds. You can't just have a couple seconds of nothingness. It's just, it's not an option. And so the nice thing about this GH5 is that the only thing that is going to keep you from recording as long as you want is going to be the battery and the memory cards. And there's obviously solutions to both of those. You could get some sort of battery system that's going to last forever. I'm sure you can actually tap into the wall with this. I've never tried it, but you can just tap in and have it powered and then have like a one terabyte SD card. And this thing will pretty much record forever. It's not going to overheat. It's gonna last forever so you don't have to worry about stopping starting you don't have to worry about having multiple cameras rolling so whenever you lose those couple of seconds when you hit that record limit on something like the r5 you have to have the other one rolling so then you don't lose those couple of seconds you don't want to have to worry about that and with this camera you don't now why do i even have this if i don't necessarily love it the reason i have it is because i actually believe it is one of the best cameras for real estate 
Now, I wouldn't have went off and got this right away for real estate because I would have stuck with Canon and made it work with Canon. But whenever I started working with Drone Hub, this was their camera. And then whenever I started shooting with them, they wanted me to use this, which I totally understand matches the footage, matches you know, the look that every other person's shooting. So then if I shoot a video, it's not gonna look different from the other videographers that they have on staff. The camera is a beast for real estate. One of the reasons is because for a while, this was one of the only DSLRs that shoots 4K60. Now, every camera that's come out in probably the past year pretty much shoots 4K60. Now, Sony has a good one. Canon has a good one. So that's not necessarily a great thing anymore because every new camera is going to have it. But this thing for a while was an absolute beast for that sole reason. It shot 4K60, and it shot 4K60 that looks good. Now, whenever a camera has a 4K sensor, the 1080 inevitably looks better, in my opinion. So, when I've used cameras in the past that only shoot 1080, like the 80D that I started out with, the footage doesn't look as good as if you're using a camera that has a 4K or even 8K sensor in 1080. There's more resolution that has to pull and a lot of the camera systems actually use a downscaling process. A lot of them in camera will shoot 4K and then it'll downscale it in camera so you'll never be able to access that 4K file but it's just pulling more data into that 1080 file so then you have more to work with. This camera has 4K60, it also has 1080 120 and 1080 240 actually which is so nice now i think it has 1080 240 it has a very very high frame rate in 1080 it might be 1080 180 i will verify that if i'm wrong i'll put some text right here but it's a beast and it was a beast for a while real estate it's still really good because the file sizes are small a 4K60 file on a Sony or Canon is going to be a lot bigger than this. And you might say, oh, that's because those have more data, then you can pull more out of the picture. But there's enough data in this camera that you don't necessarily have to worry about it. Whenever I'm shooting and I can't necessarily make it to the office to drop off footage or I'm out of town and just need to upload the footage to send to an editor, then these file sizes being small actually saves me a lot. And it saves me a lot of time. It makes it easier for the computers to edit then. And also, it just makes everything easier with uploading and downloading. Now, if you've been in it for a while and you're one of those people that doesn't really care about file sizes, well, you know, this is how it is for a business that works fast. I know with Drone Hub, we offer a 48 hour turnaround most days. And with that, I mean, you need to be fast. You can't be in LA with bad Wi-Fi uploading 100 gigs from an R5. But what you can do is try and upload 20 gigs from a GH5 and then have editors that know how to make that footage look very, very good. And then it'll make life easier. So I guess I would say that there are good things and there are bad things with this camera. The good things to start out with, great for real estate, small file sizes, still great specs that hold up to this day. The bad things, not a great photo camera. I think it's just outdated overall. The bit rates aren't high enough if you want to pull maximum color out of it. It's a micro four thirds camera, so you're going to get bad low light and you're also going to have a hard time getting as much bokeh with your lenses, in my opinion. I've just found it really annoying because even if I'm shooting with f2.8 glass, it just doesn't look as good. And it won't make that background look really nice and buttery like it will on an R5. I also think that there's just better options overall. Now, if you're starting out 100%, I think it's a good camera to start out with. You can find it for cheap right now. And if you're shooting podcasts, this is actually a great camera to use. Like I mentioned, no record limit. That's a beautiful thing whenever you're out here shooting because then you have one less thing to worry about. You know, you can set up your podcast, set up your microphones, click record on this camera, and it's not going to stop as long as you keep an eye on that battery. So you're good there. I've actually gotten like an hour and a half out of one battery before in 4K, which is amazing. But I would recommend it at the low price it's at with the specs that it has. 
you know, if you're starting out, this is a great option because, you know, you won't be held back by the specs of it. If you're a video shooter, you can, you know, get different glass. You can get different things to upgrade the camera and still kind of keep it at a lower price point and still have pretty good quality. Now, I would recommend the R5 over top of this. As you know, I use the R5. As I mentioned earlier, I'm shooting this on the R5. I would recommend the R5 over this camera 100% of the time. I think I would actually recommend this over the EOS R though. The only reason I mentioned the EOS R is because that's my camera that I had before the R5 and it's actually my B cam right now. So there's your little rankings. That's just the cameras that I've used in the past where this ranks in them. But it's a nice camera, not the best, also not the worst, a great starting point. Thank you for watching. I'll see you guys in the next one. It might be tech. It might be personal. It might be me just talking to the camera about my thoughts. Also, we're going to have guests soon, so stay tuned for that. Peace out.